If you remember last year, I drew along with you this page in my botanical journal about the winter forest floor. I discovered this interesting mushroom gas room and I made a study of it during a live session. Then I drew a liverwort and the leaves of Gallium and Lysimachia and made videos about that too. If you are new to Patreon and you want to see these videos, please check the first post under the Botanical Journal tag. This year, instead, I would like to combine some elements in the small botanical composition, a fallen branch with moss and two uh, twigs still on it, and two groups of scarlet cup mushrooms, mature and young ones. I start by placing the elements with large shapes and very light lines. First the branch, the position of the two twigs, the place for the moss. I see three groups in my reference photo. I will draw four mature mushrooms on the left, on the right, in various stages and positions. A smaller cup shape, one with a leg, one larger seam from the side. And in the middle, a larger, older one. On the opposite side, some younger fruit bodies. Let's say three of them. A medium one. A very small one lying horizontally and a larger one on the left oriented towards the middle of the composition so as to turn the gaze back to the center of the illustration so this is the frame of the illustration showing the place for each element now i can draw them in detail i start again with the twigs these two branchlets have a much simpler structure than the china fir leaves we study last month. Also, because the stem is tilted, we see very distinctly how the leaves are grouped in four rows on the right, respectively six rows on the left. I pay close attention to the distances between the rows of the needles, the negative spaces between, and the angles that the needles form with the center stem. As a look at the size of the needles, are they smaller or larger than the ones previously drawn? Don't forget to mark the base of the needles, that shape or like suction cups. The second column of needles. I build the stem as I go. The stem is whorled, but if you look closely at each segment between leaves, you can distinguish very well two or three stripes. Mark them in order to give volume to the stem. Drawing the leaves on the left side, I pay close attention to the negative space and the position of these needles on the stem in relation to the needles on the right side. So here is a triangular negative shape and I check the position relative to the needles on the right. 
is easier now because now I have another landmark I can use. Do not draw the base of the needles only on the edges of the branch, right or left, but look at their spiral arrangement at their placement on those stripes I mentioned earlier and vary their position on the branch. Some are more on the edge and some are placed more in the middle. And here I have three parallel leaves uh, getting shorter towards the tip. And the buds at the tip. I need to correct that. The stem is becoming narrower towards the tip. The scale like bracts at the base. These are in a spiral arrangement as well. Have you noticed how many things in nature grow by this pattern? And after drawing for a while, you see the lines of the spirals without having to mark them every time with construction lines. Now the branch on the left. In the photo, the placement of these needles is not very visible because they are situated in the back of the other leaves, but draw them so that they make sense. So if you start with the base of the needle here, make sure it connects on the same line with a tip somewhere up between those leaves. And always check their position in relation to the leaves on the branch uh, on the right. Three parallel needles here again. I think that with this tutorial we fixed very well in our minds the way we draw fir branch with needles. If you feel that there are other aspects of this topic that are ambiguous to you, in terms of drawing, of course, please let me know. The left side. Here we have only three large groups of leaves. Two needles at the base, two in the middle. And because of the foreshortening, we see those six at the top in one group. Notice how the first leaf in each group has a more upright position than the others. which are more or on a horizontal position. And again, I'm building the stem as I go. This one is more upright and this other three are parallel. Four actually, or five. And shorter and shorter. Marking some negative spaces. Let's draw now the moss. Looking at the hypno moss with a magnifying glass, we see the leaves arranged in a pattern of spiral. That's right. So from the side, they look something like that. Yeah. 
Now you see the lines of the spirals. And from above, something like that, like a little flower. So I will try to draw that at a very small scale. Start on the right side. You need a very sharp pencil for this. To not waste time while drawing and break the flow. Uh, I usually sharpen a few pencils before and while drawing I keep changing them when the tip becomes blunt. Now on the left, I first draw the capsules. They are very visible and with a distinct appearance. So they become a landmark for this group. Do not try to reproduce the exact position of each capsule or leaf, but rather to keep the random look of their arrangement. So randomness is, uh, is the key. Uh, uh, word for this type of drawing. Some leaves in front and on the side of those capsules. And now we see one from above. Here from the side. This from above also. Let's draw a few even smaller here. You can see them in the photo and give them a curved shape. Make that small triangles if you can, but if you don't, uh, I think lines are just enough for such a small drawing. I want to move the line of the stem a bit lower in order to create a bit of depth in the composition. So I'm erasing the construction lines for the young mushrooms and redraw them lower. So here uh, and a bit of texture on the branch and the smaller mushrooms. I still see the fainted lines of the previous drawing, so I can draw them the directly, it's not that complicated. The second and the third a bit larger and turn back to the center of the illustration. The young fruit bodies of this mushroom have long legs. Uh, small cups and as they mature uh, the cup is growing and the leg is very reduced. Lower the line on the other side too so there is a continuity. Some wood debris and put here the other mushrooms. This one is from the side, but I can see very well the inside of the mushroom and its shape in form of a cup. This is the typical scarlet elf cup mushroom. The 
then slightly above uh, one seam from the side but with focus on its back this is a young fruit turning into a mature one and it's in an it's an interesting model for the ink rendering The third one is a large mature mushroom from another position. And the fourth in the center is an old mushroom. Some of them lose their cup shape and turn into this irregular pie shape. We see here mainly the top part of the mushroom and maybe bits of the back. And I also want to show the fact that this mushroom gather water and they have a center that looks white. Is the water reflecting the, the light? So this is our composition. We can put here a few strings of moss, just to have some balance. In a day or two, I will edit the rest of the video and show you how I rendered this with ink and watercolor. Thank you for watching.